Hello, you're listening to an episode of Mentuik, the It's Spoken podcast brought to you by Brian Martin and John. Three friends who discuss all things friends, finance, faith, 5G and all the other F words. I'm your host Nims. Joining me today are Sauda and Halima. Introduce yourself, guys. Hey guys, Salaam alaikum. Um... <laughs> introduce yourself with let's give you a setting um a quirky trait that you have oh i guess i can start with this um Ooh. and it's okay. not quirky to me. <laughs> it's not quirky to me because i've done it all my life um and my family <laughs> are not happy with it but yeah my quirky habit is i play with my earlobes um yeah. Oh, I don't think that's that quirky, you know. It's, like can you describe how I you play with that. them? I, just, I feel that's very okay. mm. <laughs> so, How do you play with them? Let's get give us context first. Context. Okay, let me try and create the visuals because it is a podcast. Let's let's create the imagery. Okay. So my earlobes, right? Ever since I was probably in like nursery. It started in nursery mm-hmm. and obviously you learn boundaries. So I'd be playing with my teacher's earlobes. And I actually have the card. <laughs> Um, from my when I left the nursery, <laughs> and it's like I'm gonna see massaging my earlobes. So essentially, it's it, when you look at it, it looks like I'm massaging earlobes. But for me, it's just it's definitely a comfort thing. Like how kids would suck their thumb is how I play with my earlobes. Um, and yeah. like my dad and my I think my mom tried to stop me when I was younger. My older sister always tried to like I, she'd be doing my hair, and I'd be playing with my earlobe and she'd be slapping my hand away. <laughs> So it's, it's it's very much a, like a do it all the time kind of habit. And how does this happen when you're out and about with like hijab on? You know, see your stuff you know obviously you're going out and about in your business. When I'm occupied doing things, I'm not I'm not reaching into my hijab to play with my earlobe. But you know, <laughs> in the but quiet it is something moments, it is something that you do occasionally do reach into your hijab and play with your earlobe. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I'm I, just I, can't even, I can't even say occasionally, oh. really. When I've got a quiet moment um, and I'm not occupied with like my hands or anything yourself. like that, then yeah. It's, it's, it's so just... contrary to your personality and it's just weird because I've never witnessed it. And this is really it. Uh, we learn yeah. how to obviously conform to society. <laughs> mm. Like if my, I'd say if my teach, if I had never had a, my reception teacher scream at me when I attempted to play with her earlobes, um, scream. Yeah, she no. was... She was that teacher that shouldn't have been a reception teacher. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, if she I let I can me imagine, though, looks, like, how does mm. that even naturally happen? Like, you just reached out for her earlobes. I, literally... I think she would be shocked <laughs> as well. <laughs> <laughs> and this four-year-old, yeah, um, this four-year-old me, yeah. who had the, obviously, the privilege of all my nursery teachers, just like, yeah, that's how you might just, you know, playing with. Playing with our earlobes, that's her thing. Yeah. And, and I literally have my my, my leaving oh. card from there, so it's like, I miss your ear massages. Like, I was I was very sheltered. So then I go into reception now, I'm just reaching out for my reception teacher. <laughs> teacher's ear. He's trying to continue the... And she put yeah. a big skirt to it. So I learned the boundaries of it, but it was just, yeah. My own yeah. earlobes. My own earlobes. But that's kind of interesting, mm. though, like... Mm how you was taught not to do something in such an aggressive manner. Like, do you understand? I can imagine yeah. that could be quite traumatic. Yes. It could have been, yeah. Yeah, that's why like you remember Yeah, that. like... The fact that you remember that moment. Someone sure. just... That's not cute. No, I wouldn't have... I don't know mm. how... Shout at you. Not even shout. Yeah. Like, I don't, I, don't, I, wouldn't, I don't know how I would have stopped her from touching my earlobes. Yeah. But... I, I just can't imagine. Like, how else do you de-escalate that situation? Because I, I, I don't know. Like, it's I not definitely not by shouting. Just definitely not shouting. Like the older I get, right, I can look back and then be like, she obviously handled it terribly. But if that was a child invading my personal space, I would most likely gently guide their hand away and be like, no, we don't do that. You know, like I've mm. I've seen reception exactly. teachers since. Like it's you're dealing with someone fresh out of toddlerhood, so you know. It's it's you don't shout you don't um you don't cuss you don't do any of those things because they don't know any they don't know any better so if that was a child invading mm. my personal space whether it's my earlobes or like my face or something I'd be like no we don't do that you know the soft voice mm. you reinforce 
take just the take hand, the hand away. away. Like it's it's you never need to be aggressive with a four year old. And if you are aggressive with a four year old, you're in the wrong job. How can you have them for a four year old? That I also feel like how like is that, that not how communicating? Can you someone who's like, this like f- unless you went to a completely new school, isn't uh, that communicated? Like, how does how does nursery work? Don't you go to like reception in the same building? Oh no! So my nursery is completely a separate no. um, building, a uh, separate place. Yeah, so it was like all walking uh, distance okay, of okay, where okay. I lived, but nursery was different. And then primary school was reception two years six. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah same. I didn't. I didn't do There's preschool still, like, in this country. So. Ah, that was. <laughs> I'm very new to all of this. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was all the same building. So I thought, <laughs> don't they pass this on to pass your... the information on to the next teacher, right? In... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, in yeah. Like, in the... yeah. this is what you need to know about this student. Yeah, to be fair. Yeah, they like, or like parents yeah. tend to do that, they don't should. they? Like, yeah, depending on the parent, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I guess my parents never saw it as. It wasn't anything like, you know, harmful to anybody mm. or causing like issues or anything. So I guess, you know, maybe they assumed I'd grow out of it. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, here I am now, you know, a healthy, a, um, able adult, you know, doing what I need to do. So yeah, I play my earlobes. Sound off. Mm, okay, so maybe I'm not on that level. Because I was like, okay, yeah, touching your earlobes sometimes just like. <laughs> Yeah, no. I don't I think I touch my earlobes actively <laughs> enough for it to be a thing. Like I do, like you know, rub your mm. earlobes, but not that it's a thing. Yeah, no. Only God knows how that became yeah. like my, you know, comfort or my thing. Mm. Mm. It's a nice like I I touch other um, people's, mm. but like not even in a sound his face not even in a, a thing <laughs> just more in like a like not even let, let me let me clarify because it's gonna sound really bad like my dad used mm-hmm. to give you chilies like i don't know if you lot called it chilies when he'd rub your ear and like make it hot when you've been, been yeah 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 when you're so doing, like it'll when, be like yeah. so i have this kind of like habit of like doing it to like my brothers or someone or well not my brothers mm-hmm. one brother sometimes yeah. i just but it's not like a comfort thing it's just yeah. Like trying to cause trouble, like trying to. Yeah. That's I when know. I touch. Oh, okay. Yeah. Always someone's ear is weird, and I'm just like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. I don't touch ears. Like, I don't do that frequently yeah. either. It's just more so like yeah. your ears in my face, and I just remember like that rubbing <laughs> the hot chili thing. That's that's very infrequent, so no, I don't do. I don't touch ears. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, neither do I. I'm completely removing myself. <laughs> uh, yeah. <habit. laughs> um, do I have a question? See, see, now how do I top that in terms of, not even top it, but how do I like even match it in terms of quirkiness? I don't have, do I have quirk, a quirky thing about me? I don't even know if I'm actually that quirky, though. To be fair, I'm I actually, didn't think I'm I'm I was quirky, quirky when I said my I think, thing. I think. It's true. Do you have like a weird oh. habit? Do you have like something you do for comfort? Like recently there's this whole thing going around of um it was a hypothesis, but Jay Z grabbing Beyonce's ankle as some sort of reassurance because she has social anxiety. I don't know if you've seen Oh the I've seen the pictures of him. Yeah, I think at basketball this. games he would always have his hand around. He would her look ankles. for her ankle, yeah, yeah. And so someone was hypothesizing that it could be because she's got social anxiety so it could just be something that the couple has kind of the couple do to Mm. kind of um reassure her or make her feel i don't know but it it did bring like a lot of conversation about how like couple some someone it's so frequent to not be a an accident but it did bring Mm. up a couple of conversations in the thread about like people um the things they do to reassure their partners or whatnot like my mom used to but not so much but and my aunt i think she still does they do the vibrating leg thing sorry what's that the vibrating leg like they will tap um their legs up and down like really really fast like my aunt does it more so oh. than my mom oh right yes yeah, so is this a yeah it's I more to do with, like things. anxiety i only learn afterwards it's more so anxiety but i don't think oh. like my aunt will accept that okay yeah as an anxiety thing 
Mm. No, but like my yeah. quirky thing, which I don't do m- more so now as an adult. But when I was younger, I'd copy other people's like ticks. So my aunt's anxiety thing, I thought it was really cool. So I started doing mm. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't need to. I just thought, and so sometimes actually every now and then I'll still do it just because I have built the habit. And then yeah. um, Chris Brown had this thing where he talk with his like lip to the side, and I thought that was really cool. So I started doing that. <laughs> Um, so yeah okay. <laughs> growing up that was my thing like if I saw like someone's tick I wouldn't even recognise that it was a tick I'd just be like hmm, that's a cool thing like I wow. I really like the line on people's noses if they rub their nose upwards like you know the pig snap uh, thing ah yeah <laughs> yes yeah okay. so I started yeah. doing that too so now I have oh. a, and now it's permanent like I whatever to get the line yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, welcome to the crowd. Basically, oh, when oh, I was young, not yeah, now, really when I was younger, if I saw a tick that I liked, I would do it. And I wouldn't understand why. I just really liked that people did this thing subconsciously. So I just. Yeah, did I just, like my aunt's one with her um, legs. I'd just be doing it. Oh, mm. one time actually, my mum was swaying whilst praying. So I started swaying whilst praying. And then one of our mum's friends told me off. And I don't remember if I did it consciously or subconsciously. But I feel like I did it. And then she was like, you're moving, you're dancing while praying. And I was just like, no. And then I was just like, mommy does it. And she was just like, no, that's impossible. And I was just thinking that, I think that was like the last time when I when I done something. Because afterwards I was just like, why am I doing this? <laughs> but like, my mum would just be like standing and just swaying. And mm. aunt, that aunt was like, yeah, but your mum's like got back problems, so there's a reason why she can't stand properly. Like, why are you doing this? Yeah. <laughs> and I felt she, stupid. <laughs> she essentially thought you were just taking the mick. No, I didn't think it looked like that on the outside. I thought it no, looked like not, something. Not to you. Yeah, not to you. Yeah, like, I think I, I did. The child swaying, and she's like, "Why is this child playing in her <laughs> So like, yeah, yeah no, it was back like you know prepubescent or whatever when you had all these like movies and this person would be like oh I'm different I do this and you know like I have this really unique thing yeah. about me and so my head was all fogged up <laughs> <laughs> I think I hated that like I feel like I, I can just hear the Americans go oh my gosh this is my quirk like this is my thing yeah, because no. I don't think I have a thing. I'm trying to think, like, what do I do that is odd, that I didn't know is odd? Or, like, I don't think I... I, I really don't think I have thoughts. Maybe I'll ask some people, like... I asked my sisters, I asked my dad. But yeah. No, no, that's how I define quirky. I, I, I genuinely feel like... Mm. I feel like I'm a basic person. Maybe maybe this is my quirk the fact that I'm basic. <laughs> no, I don't think, yeah. I don't know. I genuinely don't know. But at this point in time, I can't think of anything that I do. That's do you bite like, your nails? Yeah. No. I only do that if I'm anxious. I really, I realise that. So biting nails just ne- never made sense. They don't, like, what is that? Go and get a nail tip off. I do you, like, them. tap? Yeah. Hum? Do you dance when you eat? I hate, I hate the dance when you eat one. Oh, How I dance you, when I eat. Oh. No, dance I dance when I eat. eat no, no, no. I don't I hate it because eat, people like, do it. I hate it because it became mm. a trend. Like people was, yeah. 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 And then it made me feel yeah. really bad because I was just like, oh. <laughs> Am I, yeah, am I subconsciously doing this because No, of I never did trend. it because of yeah, the trend. I I've always just enjoyed it. I know, But then I people know. started cussing the like, trend and then I felt like they were cussing me. So I was... Yes. It was. It was and then people would just be like, yeah. girls it think dancing when they're eating is cute. And I just thought, yeah. When we say people, Sorry. is it guys or is it guys and girls saying that? I think it became guys and girls. Like it became okay. like... It wasn't Arthur. It was really just a particular brand of TikTok where they would mm. be eating food and yeah. then doing like this little shimmy that was off beat. Yeah. And I was just like, <laughs> yeah. Stop. Because some of us, this is like actually like, this is like reality, okay? This is so lived experience. And then they would be like, and okay. I would really hate the video. <laughs> but then like, I couldn't say or do or retweet that I hated the video because like the quote tweets hated the video, but I felt like they were coming for me. And oh, so I was just like, I couldn't even be first. like, yeah, like, you know when you're like, 
oh, that's how I am. Like, oh, I do that too. Like, I couldn't even say that because they would be like, look at you trying to beg or look at you trying to... <laughs> like, I don't know. Have no mind. Like, pick me, that's yeah. it. They started calling us pick me's. Imagine yeah, there was that. a time when like... People doing so, like for example, there was this, there was there was another thing of like people that like to cook for people being pick me's. Like sometimes we'll be like, oh, when my friends are ill, I show oh, up with you. Food. Like, like there was a thread like that, and then someone was like, oh, the pick me's agenda strong, and I was just there like, oh my god. Oh Ooh. gosh, because uh, that's yeah, anyone does that. <laughs> like, am so, I just generic yeah. basic? <laughs> like, <laughs> am I just a TikTok blonde? Like, is this is my personality just bland? <laughs> Everything I thought was me was just. Like, I can't in public do this anymore because it's just to oversaturated. Be fair, yeah. It's, yeah, it's been branded as, as, <laughs> as something. I do dance when I eat, but I feel like that's me. Right. I feel like a lot of people do dance. It like, doesn't feel... Enjoy. Mm. I'm happy, okay? I'm happy. This food is here. I can smell it. It's, it's fresh. It's hot. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's tempted. It's comments. just that they've made a lot of things like caricatures and just like... It, it just now feels disingenuous so sometimes you're just like they do yeah. it's better for you to restrain <laughs> than become yeah, like some someone got onto, like when in college someone got i think i've told you the story someone got onto me for giggling and they were like you giggle to attract men and i was just like <laughs> new laugh <laughs> <laughs> never gonna Stop. laugh again. <laughs> never gonna laugh again then. Like, we was taught that you don't laugh with your mouth open. Huh? Oh, wow. Yeah, like there was like a sunna thing, like you're oh. not supposed to like kick you with all your teeth showing. Oh. But then it's just like giggling is now oh. like, oh yeah, you giggle for men and stuff like that. A majority of my, my friends were boys. Oh. So it was just like, I, I have no counter. Mm. So who told you? I also put a couple girls in. Um, it was, it was... Maybe. Not maybe. I mean. Jealous or not, it was just like I think it was a hypothesis that had evidence. My friends were male, I was giggling. <laughs> so so I sat there like no, but so you giggling in public no more. No. <laughs> you gotta stay home mind your business like oh, okay. <laughs> but then why the reason why I say is maybe they're jealous is because why did they feel the need in their soul spirit to come and tell you? Mind your business. Maybe you're doing giggle, giggle, yeah. but that's none of their business. Why do they feel the need to come mm-hmm. and correct? I think the way my personality is set up is like when I get I th- attacks like that, I really just retreat because I I'm not doing anything for men. So yeah. the moment you tell me that you are your personality is set up for men, I'm like, Bye. I yeah. have I run because it's just like that's not what I want. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> You have to go in the opposite direction. Everything else did by. Whether it's true or not, it's like... You're leaving. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> not not a chance. I don't not like them. <laughs> but I feel like it's very easy. <laughs> yeah, neither do I. But yeah, I, I feel like... Um, yeah, that one, I think it's very easy to be like, oh, they're doing this. Do I feel like everything that? can be done for men. Everything can be pick me. Everything <sighs> can... Can we breathe? Some, obviously, there is, there is some truth to certain things. So there are a, a, a subset of women who do things for the attractiveness of men, whether that be cook, whether that be laugh, or this, that, the other. But I feel like you can't have to be conscious of that. I feel like every person who does mm-hmm. that knows what they're doing. Deep, deep down inside. Whereas them, I feel like if you do some self-searching, where you think, where you trying to... No, no. I, think, men, I think what I've learned not. is I had um, a skewered sense of boundary mm-hmm. because I grew up with boys. So then there was that whole thing of girls who say, oh, I don't have female friends because all my friends are boys. And there was that whole... Co- and I was like, oh, that's me. This is the thing, right? You, you don't, you don't then, then add all girls are drama. Do you know what I mean? You, you've never oh yeah, no, that. I am. All girls are drama. Drama because can't stand them. Okay, that's the revelation <laughs> <for> me. <laughs> but then it's like I, I can't stand boys either. I just hate people. I just feel like you all stink. Balance. Like leave me alone. Like, a lot of people that gave me Balance. grief. I went to a girls' school, so girls were oh, girls were drama queens. And yeah, been there. Oh yeah, we go to girls' yeah, school. Yeah, girls. Understand. And yeah. then I grew up with like a very male-dominated family, mm. and so I, I I had like a really skewered <laughs> sense of boundary, mm. and so I'd be just normal. Yeah. But to other people, it was like there's the glossy eyes. Yeah, that's but, yeah. and, the, and don't and don't mind that. I genuinely feel like it's literally just not minding it's because even when we. When you're thinking about Literally. people looking at the habits of somebody giggling, somebody dancing on the 
all, all the common denominator is none of them are minding their business. Their nose is very long. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Because let's say, okay, in the worst case scenario, anyway, let's say you were up to no good. Let's say you were begging man's attention. <laughs> Whose problem is that? Is it your own problem? Oh, it's a problem. So you need to be sorted out yourself. Like, <laughs> it's, it's a problem for you. Like, do you know what I mean? Oh, no, definitely, please. I will be the biggest advocate for not begging the man's attention. But it's I only think, your problem. It's only the individual. I know. Do, do you but see I, what I mean? Like, it's like not their problem to be doing that. It will be annoying, though. Don't lie. Like, we <laughs> see when people do that, and the girls that do that are annoying. So you kind of don't want to be like them the ones that laugh a little too loud you know what i'm saying so I've, let me let me yeah i've seen the cringe behavior but i've never felt compelled to walk up to you know a particular person to be like you know that was super cringe do you understand it, okay, and, and it's like it's under the cover yeah. of i'm looking at for you but really it's you're kind of embarrassing yourself here you that's why you guys are my bit. friends as long as you're embarrassing yourself by yourself do you know what I mean? like as long as you embarrass yourself just you in the corner there. When you come here, as long as it's not affecting me and my interactions with you and my life, like, I don't feel like that's... I wouldn't think no, so. No, I don't. I think, luckily, alhamdulillah, like, I survived this long just not caring. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, <laughs> just, you know what I mean? Like, I wasn't even aware. Like, I didn't know any of this. But I do mm-hmm. think a lot of it as well does determine, has determined how I pick friends. So, like, people who would make those kind of comments, I don't keep around for long because it's like, yeah. if you... Like, for me, I feel like it's a projection of you and yeah. your beliefs like if you're yes. seeing things it through th- those eyes and that's a problem with you like i yeah. i didn't even see it like, that's you and your heart literally, literally right like literally. i didn't even see things like that but then it doesn't mean that i'm not gonna look back and think oh yeah i didn't do nothing wrong i'd be like no i definitely didn't know boundaries back then yeah, yeah. but it wasn't and, and it wasn't to the extent that i was just misbehaving either it was just the simple thing of like things that and when i say that it's more so because of twitter when i read things that people <laughs> kind of narrow in on and then i'm yeah. like oh is this weird but then i also yeah. have to remember that like twitter just what's that word um it's an extra but it also changing? blows things up like it makes minor things seem a lot larger yes. than, Very true. than Very they are true. right so it is always but mm. th- that aside tiktok has ruined my personality i have none <laughs> <laughs> I don't cook for people. Oh. I don't dance. <laughs> you know the solution is to just not ever touch TikTok, right? <sighs> and then you won't know what TikTok's yeah. saying because you know. To be honest, yeah, I think a lot of it gone. I feel in no, like even so a lot of like I think it makes you averse. Not even to it just mm. makes you in general it makes you averse to kind of like recording yourself and putting yourself out there because you're you know whilst you're doing it you're having fun. Yeah. But then there's this thing in the back of your mind it's like, am I performing? Am I acting mm. this up? That's why I really love candidates because I'm just kind of like, nothing can tell you. Like, not, I can't convince myself that this was fake. This was genuinely mm-hmm. um, um, mm-hmm. a moment that you've caught and it's a very sincere. So candid photography, candid videos, mm-hmm. all of those things I really, really genuinely love because I feel like, yeah, that's, that's fake. Why is it so silent? That's genuine. That's that's. I get that, but at the same time, to put something out on the internet, there is this element mm, of mm, mm. performance in that you put it out to the world. And I feel like as long as it's not harming people, it's is it a bad that, reason? It's yeah. because that problematic. Not really. Like let's let's take influencer culture, influencer lifestyle. Everybody hates the influencers. Mm. But that's their job. Like, do you really like? Do you really want like their job yeah. is to look somehow? to entice you to get certain products or to this, that, the other, right? Obviously, you can take it to a point where there is a problem, right? Because everything in extremes is bad. But the reality is they have, you know, you, they've got up, they've done their face, they've done their clothes, they've this, that, the other. They put on this show that you like and... Yeah. Do, do, do you get what I mean? Like, I feel like it's not an issue. As long as, as long as, as long as the performance is... Authentic. Okay, as an individual, I feel like as long as you've des- as decided to do the performance and you're aware of that in yourself, as, as long as you're aware that, okay, this is me putting that effort into to do this or look like that and to get this outcome, which is, I think is fine. If you're going to get money, get some money. If you want to look this way, look this way, and it's not harming people, I think that's okay. Like, we shouldn't have to, not necessarily force, but we shouldn't have to always be this stripped back version of it. I feel like you can you can choose mm. where you want to be on the spectrum of like this is completely like I didn't see the camera and this was yeah I posted yeah. the camera and what it's like that's, I think that's what we're choose. moving towards anyway yeah. is like becoming more accepting of the fact that this is a 
personality that's being reflected. Yeah, someone's sneezing. Some... So does someone sneeze? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I was, I, was yes, sorry, I think we are moving towards a fact that um towards a space where on the internet we're recognizing that this is a personality, this isn't the person. Which was yeah, yeah which was it's something weird. we didn't have as a clear distinction in the past, like we thought what you see is what you got. Yeah. I don't think it was like this was real. It was just more so the fact that like you weren't an actor. So a mm. YouTuber wasn't classified as an actor. So you being on YouTube, there was almost this, this expectation or you doing anything that you was being yourself. Yeah. And I think now people are like, YouTubers mm-hmm. is a, it's a form of a career. They're like pseudo actors or something so it's not just i think we're more acceptant of people showing us various personalities and like comedic or reality yeah which i also which i think i hope yeah i hope people are getting it because i feel like part of the reason why people get like slandered dragged and maybe in extreme cases cancelled is because people don't accept that reality of the fact that this is i just showed you a portion of my life i showed you a portion of this and also, there's this, there's this concept of saying, I don't know, of like how when you have, let's say, celebrities, and I guess the same thing applies to the YouTubers and influencers, as they raise the status, they decrease oh. the humanity in oh. that we don't expect the... We don't, oh. <laughs> you <laughs> said decrease in humanity, so I was like, it, do they become crueler? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not humanity. Maybe the humanity wasn't the word, but in, 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 in the sense that we don't see them <laughs> yeah. as human as, anymore. We strip and take away yeah, the human, it, the same human kind of their flaws, the expectation that we have for our mm-hmm. neighbors. We take them away. Yeah. So, for example, like Beyonce is a good example. As great as she is in terms of accomplishment and career, I feel like she will do something or say something. It's like the way everyone latches onto it. Sometimes, and the way people speak about her is like you do realize she's actually another human being. Like we have to remember. I, I, I don't forget. We have to remember at the end of the day she's a human being. She's just maybe a bit mm. more wealthy, and we know her. There's this thing of, yeah, it's access. It, it, it contributes to praise. Yeah, it contributes to the praise that they get, but it also contributes to the extreme slander and entitlement that we have of, of people. Just because you see me now, you think this, that, yeah, that. Yeah, oh, because it's, it's, it's gone from yeah. appreciating whatever talent or anything they have to just straight idolization. Yeah, it's gone from like focus on the art. Yes. To, yeah. And there are like, you can enjoy someone's art and what they uh, produce. Mm hmm. And separate that from them. Like, you right, don't. Mm, okay, cool. With some exceptions, <gasps> i.e. R. Kelly. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Again, it's about the harm of, like, he used his his um, art and therefore status to then exploit. excuse mm. and cover up and expo- uh, uh, exploit mm. people. That's where we, yeah, we definitely cancel. We definitely, mm. do you know what I mean? We don't like that. Then I can even that, but I think otherwise it's like, yeah, no, I don't know you. I came to give you this thing. I, I choose to give you this, these parts of myself in the ways that I've chosen to give you these parts of myself or parts of what I do. Take it or leave it. Like, and it's hmm. it seems what, what you're saying sounds like common sense because it is. And then you take for granted <laughs> how you think. You think to yourself, you know, this makes sense. Yeah. This is logical. The person and the art. You know, this person produces the art and I have no reason to idolise this person. I have mm-hmm. no reason to... They call it parasocial relationships. I remember I watched a YouTube video on that where, you know, whether mm. it's a YouTuber or a celebrity, you believe because of social media access that there's a there's a relationship there, you know, because they're like, we're going to do this thing together. Join me. And it's like that person's never met you in life and they never will. Like um, on a personal level, right? Well, some of them will find house. you. Some of them will. Some of them will. Well, um, that's <laughs> that's what like a a one percent chance. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Is there... Those are yeah. dangerous stalkers because I feel like with with some let's say influencers, YouTubers, I can say they live here, they live here, they live here, just because like, they've given out so YouTube. much. I like I like no yeah. yeah, so yeah, yeah. to their own for some of them to to their own detriment because there and have I've been stories. You know? I'm quite attentive. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm just like, oh, I know this place, oh, I know that place, or just because you've done this and people have done that. I, I kind of sound like a stalker, I won't lie, but I will never. There's some certain people I could be like, okay, I could visit, I know exactly where you live, I can visit you, but I'm yeah. never going to do that because, do you know what I mean? Like, That's why I also like, 
Th- I'm not even a celebrity, I. and I also feel a type of way about posting my lives directly. Like when mm. I'm somewhere, I can record my inst- my um sorry not live sorry IG stories. I can record videos, and then when I get to like another place, that's when I upload them. Like I don't smart. I don't really like going on my way to this and then posting it straight or on my way to here or this because I just feel like you're giving away too much. Especially since mm. that time when someone was like, I saw you and I was just like, no, you didn't. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, no, I was like, that, no, you didn't. Whether not. they saw me or not, I knew I saw someone look at me and I felt like, Wow. And then afterwards, when I got home, I got a message. I saw you out today and I didn't even ask where. I just said, nope, didn't leave my house today. (laughs) (laughs) That was the end of that. That was the end of that because I'm not doing... People give, like... Influencers can be, like, on IG story and I'll be like, oh, you're at Oxford Street. Oh, you're here right now. Like, Yeah. If I had bad intentions, I can literally... Or you, or the one where like you post something and then someone else I follow post something and then I see two sides like now I see the whole house because oh my God. you're together. I love that day. That's so funny. Oh <laughs> you're together. I feel like I feel like certain things like for example, let's say I'm mm. on Oxford Street. Um, oh, well, it depends. If it's like let's say a guy and a girl and they're, they're supposed to be at school, yeah, yeah. they don't want to let people know. Then you just then mm-hmm. you just played yourself. Come on, use your head. Like, if, if, if he's going to do the snap and I'm going to do the snap, I do the snap here at this time and you do the snap there at that time. And you just have to be No, anyway, I've seen people... Like, sorry to interrupt. I've seen people places. figure so, out... Like, this is celeb culture, though. I've seen people figure out two people were dating even though they didn't post at the same time <laughs> because of something like the skyline and then because of something... Like, it was just so odd. It was literally, like, and then in the corner and then someone else was, like, in the reflection and they put together all of these pieces and was like, these two have to be dating because look and they didn't post at the same time they didn't they were posting landscape imagery landscape i love that i love that but like i would never go out of my way even if i was the person that was interested or whatever i would never go out my way to like publicize this is what i decided with you i just like to know that oh Mm-hmm. figure that out mm-hmm. and then I just keep it moving like it's never going to be something that I put on the what I don't know shade bar or this that or the other leak to some people that I found this out because this that... yeah I, I do the maths mm-hmm. and I keep it stepping like yeah some people are really yeah. dating on IG story but though, I feel like, like public not, not, not so much during lockdown but I do remember <laughs> <laughs> you would just be there like <laughs> I, you're in the same restaurant someone might post it on their feed and then someone else would just be posting it. like why do I keep seeing this and you know how IG puts everything on explore these days so I'm like why do I keep seeing this same location but then I'll be like oh it's two different people uploaded and then I'm like did something happen here then the curiosity so I'm, I look into it you're both posting food but yeah. the location I did. Mm, Instagram's already told yeah, me you're yeah. in the same place. <laughs> well, <laughs> literally, literally, exactly. The curiosity, maybe, maybe I tap here, tap there, but I will never go out and publicize. I'll tell people, oh, by the way, like, do you know what I mean? I just think, nah. So I wouldn't mind personally. I would not mind. There's certain things I've said, I've put out there. Like, I know I've, I've said I live in South of London. I know I've said I went to this uni. I know I've said the, the, if I'm out and about to, in a public space. I don't, I'm not really someone who actually snaps and that a lot, to be honest. Maybe I should, but I don't mind being out and about in public, but I'm very, very particular about my address. I'm very, very particular about my number. And maybe my surname's out there. So I put it out there before. I, I may not be able to get it back. But there are certain things that I'm very conscious of, like, oh, I'm not going to do this because of this. Like, for example, I post I, if I go out to, to my road, because I don't want to walk all the way to the park, if I go out and take pictures outside, I will be blaring out things because I just don't want people to fight. Yeah, I will set, spend the time to blur out the car registrations, blur out the the street names, blur out anything that's identifiable because it's like... You have to be careful. I know yeah. what I'm like. <laughs> so I know what people could be like. I know what people could be... I, okay, I've never gone to search someone's car to spam okay. on someone's list, but I know I can do it. Yes. I know what I, know what I can do <laughs> with the internet. So I don't even take pictures of full roads done. anymore because I know I can identify roads when I see people. Because I'll be like... And I know exactly where that is. So now when I take, like the other day when I was coming mm-hmm. back from somewhere and I took a picture, I took it like, what's it? What what degrees is this? 
horizontal the basically. sky kind of thing yeah you yeah, tend to do I, this i realize you tend to take and, it like and the trees and the because sky i just thought the, yeah the, the, the top of like, buildings. roads are so i de- and i only take pictures of the same road now because like if i'm like if i'm doing the whole on my way home kind of thing because i feel like that's the road that i've taken so many pictures of so I only take like pictures of that road. I don't take pictures because I feel like if I take pictures of other roads and I'm giving you like all the information of how to get into my house, like now you can build the map. So I don't take pictures of like the other roads. If I do this only skyline now, yes, like okay. all the way at the top, I, I don't know why. I just thought there's way too much information. Yeah. If someone's taking notes, all of this like yeah. location, Snapchat, all of these things, like now it's like ask the app not to track. Anytime, anytime I open a new app, Apple will ask me, ask app not to track. And I'm like, yep, don't track. Like, why are you tracking me for, babe? Really? I'm just like, well, you're going to take this bit. I don't care. I feel like, yeah, you're going to take this information anyway. And I'm very conscious of, like, this is what I'm giving. I just, I'm just not scared. Even though maybe I should be. I just, it is what it is. But, um, yeah, it, even, okay, even with this, but then going back to what I said earlier, in terms of how, like, we, well, not, I try not to do this myself, but people tend to, like, lose humanity for like mm. celebrities or like celebrities or whoever they want to be or whatever I then have to remember like you know these people are human beings like they're not going to live in a separate world um, in a separate thing to go to separate places just because they what seem to live a different life or have a bit of money or whatever it is that people like them for do you know what I mean so it's like oh yeah you want to the circus I'm going to the circus I feel like that's that's the positive of seeing people live <laughs> the same if that makes sense like you live here, I live here. We're basic neighbors, but like it adds. I think it adds reality. The way I stalk is to add reality. Add, add to context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not to go out and do something. Yeah, it's called. See, I was telling my friends, it's context. Okay, it's context. It's context it's and it's intention as well. Like I know you're not trying to be out here causing yeah. harm to people, and this is going India. to people's houses and be yeah. like knock knock. Yes. But then no. That's Listen, mm-hmm. best friends be doing people. a lot these, these days. Mm-hmm. But I feel like for me, it's just the fact that like not everyone is positive vibes, and not everyone knows equal boundaries like that. So some other person might as well th- might think as well that like they're not gonna do anything crazy, but they're great vibes, and they feel like I would be great vibes too. So they're gonna show up at my door and be like, "Let's be friends." Like some people might think that way. Yeah. This is what I'm. <laughs> so <laughs> we have to be careful. I've I've. What do you do when that happens? You just have to not open the door. What do you mean? I, I feel like <laughs> when I first <laughs> was doing socials, I, I I started off friendly and then I felt like people were getting way too over familiar. So I scaled back like completely. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then now I'm like friendly again. But I do have this like nick like niggling feeling in my head where I'm just like, I hope they don't consider us friends. <laughs> like I'm not trying to <laughs> Huh? <laughs> yeah, like I don't want to be rude or mean or anything like that. And I'm not rude or mean to anyone that talks to me. Yeah. But in my head, I'm like, I hope this interaction isn't leading this person to think we're more than we are. Wow. Because, mm. yeah, yeah, like not that. because of anything, and not because like I I think too much about myself or anything like that. But it's just. I don't do well with social with online social cues in particular. Like I don't I prefer to meet people in real life so I can judge you based on what I see. Absolutely. I can be very, very polite and nice to you online <laughs> because I don't know you and that barrier allows me to be to feel protected. Mm-hmm. But I can't have you feeling like we are now besties because because for me that barrier is still very much in place. So when mm-hmm. people are like Met my best friend online, da 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 da. Had a phone call, da 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 da. Like, I can't do that. Like, Kareem, I met you in real life before I decided I was friends with you. Like, I don't. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I met I you like you. three, yeah. four times. I judged you. Yeah. And I was like, she's not bad. <laughs> she's, she's not bad. Social, I'm like, she'd be cool to know. But I never thought, oh, that's my friend in my head. I don't do that. But, like, that's personally not my habit. To see someone on social and be like, yeah, that's like my friend in my head. Like, yeah. But a, lot a lot of friendships are yeah, doing that now. Yeah. A lot of people. Now they are. And mm. I feel like finding friends online mm. is cool. But I feel like you need to be able to taste the Absolutely. relationship and be like, yeah, this is 
like be able to accurately define yeah. what this relationship is. Okay, I can speak to you. We could be interacting a lot on the timeline or in, even in our DMs, mm-hmm. wherever it is, whatever mm-hmm. we're doing online regularly. But that has to be reinforced said, there, with there physical presence. With real life. 100%. And it's funny. <laughs> hmm. Did an Apple say? No, just to, just to, to comment, like my difference. younger sister came to me yesterday, funnily enough, and she was like to me, what do you think about having online friends? And I was like, oh, you know, if you have like mutual interests and things. And for me, online friends meant, um, you know, like you like mutually like, oh no, the same, but it's like tastes in whatever particular, some, something there is, you know, you've joined together essentially. Whether it's like a YouTuber or something like that. And you comment on like, you know, the same videos and stuff. So that, that kind of familiarity. But then she was like, um, she knows of people now that they say that they've got online friends like real friends but they've never met in real life and I'm like oh so I was like you know COVID has definitely accelerated this I would say um, in the younger um, age group because I I know the internet's been around I know people have had online friends but to say you've never met this friend and they're your friend like Mm. you've never met this friend in person but you're like yeah yeah. I think it I think it's a thing of you can meet someone online, but I think the fact that you have to face the friendship mm. with online friend is where you and I both know that yeah. there's a limit or there's a boundary, yeah. there's a flavor exactly. of this relationship. So I feel like, yes, you can meet people online. Yes, you can have all these mutual interests yep. and all the vibes, but they're yes. very online. I just, and I did, okay, Apple yesterday, I watching WWDC, so like Worldwide Event for Conference, they do one like every year. Um, talking about what they were going to release and this that like, me just being a fan girl I just loved it but um, they they did a, they one of the products or with the FaceTime they were explaining how with increased online so interaction there mm. are things that are lost so they were introducing new things to kind of compromise and compensate for that so for example just the way we, we perceive the environment and then as we know things like yeah. body language and all of that we don't get as yeah. much when you're online Um which is why I feel great to mm-hmm, understand mm-hmm. Yeah. how they're selling money, Absolutely. taking our money and whatnot. But point is, I don't think you can, I can't say any of my friends are people that, yeah, no, there's no way. I think that's, sorry, like I have to meet you in person. I have to vibe with you in person. I have to do something with you in person for me yeah. to be a friend. I can be talking to you, talking to you, talking to you online. Yeah, I think that's, in my head, that's the distinction between my friends and my, oh, I like yeah. this person, I like this person. Yeah. It's, I can I have a relationship with you offline where it's like, okay, I can speak to you on WhatsApp, then we can do something offline. Or I don't know, it's just there's I think there's a clear yeah. there's a clear yeah. difference. But I think a lot of people don't have that mm. I guess maybe it's boundaries or maybe not to, no offense to people, but like when you were developing or something, like, did you not get mm. that that memo? Like No, I, I think know, I think what it is is like, you know, I gotta give myself props. I think I'm a great online personality. Like I think <laughs> online vibe wise <laughs> Um, cause I have, I only go online when I have energy for online. So you meet me at my, my best. Best. What's that? What, yeah. Like at my yeah. best, like I'm not, yeah. I'm not on and, and I'm someone that I don't transfer energies anyways. Like if someone else has pissed me off, I don't mm-hmm. give that energy to other people, both mm-hmm. online and offline. Like I pride myself in that. Okay. So when I'm online, you will get prime great energy. And if I'm, or if you do something that like pisses me off or whatever, then I just leave that out. And so I don't think people ever have to like deal with me in negative or do you know what I mean? Like in a not so great environment and stuff like that. So when I'm online, I really feel like you're getting a great version of me, mm-hmm. not a full version, but the version you're getting is absolutely fin- like she's a great person that Nims. And so I really worry because I'm like, I know I'm giving you top tier and like interaction mm-hmm. right now. I cannot sustain this in real life. I'm, a, I'm, I'm going to let you down very quickly because I don't care. Mm. <laughs> so in my head, I'm like, you really can't be thinking we're friends because this person, you're never going to meet them. Mm. This one, this nips, does not <laughs> exist. Yeah. And a lot of people yeah. online, like I've had people be but, like, oh, I thought you were chatty. And I was just like, wow, like, First of all, I'm judging you right now, like I just met you. <laughs> so you're you're doing you're currently under assessment. Like <laughs> that's it's a fair you know what I mean? This is an interview. Like, and then you expect me to talk. I'm waiting for you to talk so I can make sure judge. that 
my online opinion of you matches your real life opinion and they were like i'm not yeah. too talk i'm not talking yeah, yeah, yeah. of course i'm not talking i don't know you <laughs> but <laughs> people that can match energy and then you have people actually um which i was going to say earlier that are very fantastic online but extremely introverted oh. in real life but yeah many youtubers mm. many many youtubers yeah. when we used to just yeah. influence the meetups and all of these things and, every, and the whole like raid was networking mm. and we'd go to the event and it was just silence like <laughs> it was it was yeah. I silence silence's thing like it was like a graveyard no but like, I know what you mean just, <laughs> like, it was just the personalities was just dead and I get it because because performance aside weird. like if I think about it from my lens a lot of people might be like me they're looking to see what you know how people are going to be and no one wants to be entertaining people in real life after you've entertained them online too but it was a graveyard like it's just i always say or click yeah I, I always say that people forget that youtubers are people that sit in a room by themselves and turn a camera on and deliver in a room by themselves that is literally the definition of an introvert they are getting energy from themselves they are mm. fulfilled by their own creation their own time oh my god do you understand yeah. people think intro- to be an introvert is to be sat in a library and you don't want to talk to people it's, it's to be like socially anxious and to be shy and and it's none of yeah. that it's literally you are rejuvenated by your own time so in, in essence the, i would say the large majority of youtubers minus your celebrities that have joined youtube right but people that are like hi guys welcome to my channel and they don't have other people come onto their channel. Give give or take maybe like a sibling or a parent or their husband or their partner or so on. Mm. It's them and a camera. That's an introvert. And so they've now gone out into the world, right? Like they've left their they've left their cocoon and they're going to these events and people are just like, I saw your energy like all oh, your your energy is so amazing, your persona, your this, your that. You're talking mm. to an introvert, you are draining them right now. Giving them all this energy, throwing out of them. Do you, you understand? Are, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's so good. You know why? I'm, I'm here, I'm sitting here. Mm-hmm. This, this is why, why I'm not doing my videos. Okay, yes. I- <laughs> no, no, 100%. This girl's coming up with your excuses me. as to why she's not editing. <laughs> okay, editing, Kate. Hey. My, my issue is that I've left stuff. So now mm-hmm. there's a thing of I have to go through it. Do I still want to put this out? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. But then in terms of like sitting down to do there's a yes my energy literally dips and I, if i sit yeah. down and go hey people blah 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 blah, blah it's not the same as me telling i can tell us i can sit down and tell us mm-hmm, 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 i think yeah, i'm yeah. i'm good here i'm good with like my friends i'm good with people like anyone just I'm put them in front yeah. of me and i just talk right but this yeah, is yeah, a, yeah, wow my mind is opened so i literally yesterday mm-hmm. i was thinking i was talking to wait what's today tuesday the day before yesterday i was with my friends i was telling stories telling stories and they're like, oh yeah, like you should put this on YouTube. I'm like, yeah, I do want to put it on YouTube, but then there's this reluctancy mm-hmm. to put it on YouTube because it's long. But I feel like part of the reluctancy is the fact that like there's a difference between me mm-hmm, sitting mm-hmm. by my friends or anybody doing yeah. yeah. and me sitting by myself and doing it. Like, I have to mm-hmm. like proper. You you hype yourself up and you like you, yeah, yeah. you you build up the energy. Yeah. And then my thing with that is that the finished product never feels authentic to me because it's very much like yes mm. oh like it's 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 a more manic version of me which is fun times great vibes but it's like mm. this is not how i it's i'm not yeah. happy with the the difference in what i know my, i see myself that's what i've seen as well so it's like mm. i film something and i'm like okay it's okay and i don't have to be perfect it's cool but i know this mm. is not how i tell stories to my friends like i know that the, the vibes are not the same like People are like, yeah, this yeah. is good to put on the internet. You're great for the internet. Yeah. Da, 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 da. And then I try and do this myself in my yeah. bedroom or wherever by myself. And it's it's wow. just, it's not the same. And I'm not happy. And then but I'm then you're like, great with voice again. notes, which is so why I love the it's podcast. It's just like, I can do several <laughs> podcasts by myself because I'm great with voice notes. Like, mm-hmm. I'm like. Oh, voice notes. Yeah. Yeah, I just like to talk, you see. But then again, it's, it's, a difference be- it's the difference between yeah. like, I'm speaking to you. Like, in my head, I've. I've got enough of you to be like, okay, I'm speaking to you. Like, I'm yeah, speaking yeah. to you. Like, do you know what I mean? Whereas maybe I have to, yeah, put the effort to be like, okay, I'm telling myself this now. I have to put the effort to thinking, mm-hmm. who's on the other side of the camera? People. But yeah, as you were saying that, I was just like, wow, like, this oh, makes sense yeah. as to why when you turn the camera yeah. on, it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's dead in comparison. See, I don't, I don't give this energy so to a camera. 
Whereas yeah. I know there's nothing, there's, energy. there's no dialogue, there's no, there's no pushback, yeah. there's nothing on the other side. It's just, it's like those people that can oh, like, okay, what's it called? Just like talk to the camera, like how huh? you know on Clubhouse. It's also why I don't don't do great on Clubhouse because it's just silent. Like even if there was like ambiance and like background <laughs> murmuring, it would feel <laughs> more. Do you know what I mean? It would feel more like a dialogue. But yeah. sometimes it just feels like I'm talking to air, and then people's responses are delayed because they have to unmute their mic. So then I feel like the punchline mm. missed. Oh, yeah, like it it. oh, the banter is not genuine anymore because it's like. Joke, joke, joke. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Literally, like, oh my gosh. Wow, he, you're actually very oh, smart. Oh, yeah, I'm doing like, very, but like, it's, still, it's, it's the reading. It's the reading, my darling. There's a book, and I'll, I'll probably put it in the chat, and I recommend it to everyone listening to it. It's called Quiet by Susan Kane. Mm-hmm. And it's phenomenal because, again... Mm. People think to be introverted. I think what got me into it, it got me into it is, you know, I just love to read and I like listen to her TED talk. And she mentioned the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A lot of people and she's like she's a white non Muslim woman. So I got Mm-mm. curious and I got intrigued. Yeah, why, why are you talking about him, babe? <laughs> why are you talking about that? my prophet? My prophet says so <laughs> like, like, you better be careful. <laughs> Let it me was, <laughs> It was super... I'll actually share it as well, but I highly recommend it for those listening as well. So Susan came on YouTube. The talk is called... Um, oh my called gosh. The Power of Introverts. Something like that. I think yeah. I saw that video the other day. I saw this white lady and she said something, something Listen, something, something. I said, hmm, I recommend. What, what's going Listen, on here? Like, what's what to say? <laughs> and I scrolled past it because I was like, I don't know. You were just not like... <laughs> I don't know what you got to say, lady. Yeah. I, I no, don't know honestly, if I want to find out. It's a pleasant surprise because because the talk was about being uh, a you know, being excuse. like being alone and being not only just not only just enjoying it, but that's your your natural temperament. Yeah, like yeah, you're, yeah, you're used to it, right? And when people give speeches and when they give talks and they give religious examples, right? They mention Buddha and they mention Jesus, and then that's where they stop. Mm-hmm. But what got me in it was that she mm. mentioned Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I was like. This woman has actually done her research. Like, people don't get to Islam. They don't get to um, inspiring figures within mm-hmm. the Islamic religion when they're referencing world religions in a talk that they're given. So they, they might talk about Mother Teresa. They'll mm-hmm. talk about Martin Luther King. They'll talk about Mahatma Gandhi. And you, you get these names, right? You never hear Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so when she spoke so about him, she spoke about the fact that and it was a brief mention, but it was just so, I was just like, this woman, this is someone that's paying attention. So she was like, the fact that he would go to the cave and meditate, like, and meditate or be in his own, like, solitude and be mm-hmm, with mm-hmm, himself. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this woman's red. This woman just said that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was an introvert. And subhanAllah, I was like, mm. I get it. <laughs> like, when you talk about introversion, like, I've, I've, I feel like I'm repeating myself at this point, but... Essentially, you're rejuvenated by your mm-hmm. own thoughts. You have to be in, you enjoy your solitude. You see it as essential to just kind of being yourself. And so Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before he gets revelations, you know, he's married, he's got a job, you know, like in, the, in that time period that he lived in, in like, you know, early century Arabia, I can't remember the century, um, but, you know, very early, um, uh, it, you know, Arab lands, etc. Mm-hmm. And yeah. this is someone that had what can be deemed a good life. His wife was, his wife Khadija, radiallahu anha, very wealthy. They were deeply in love. They had a healthy, happy mm-hmm. marriage. He had a good, you know, job role. But there was, there was more. He needed more. And he didn't know what that looked like. He didn't know what it would feel like. But he would go to a cave and he would sit with himself to try and work it out. And I'm like, if that's not an introvert, mm-hmm. like if we take it to the modern day period now, if I'm like, I don't know, and I'm, you know, I, I, do, I call myself an introvert very easily. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, for example, with my career path. I'm not going to go, my natural incl- inclination isn't to go and talk to several different people and get insight and feedback. I'm going to sit with myself and I'm going to get like a career development book and I'm going to be like making notes mm-hmm. and I'm going to be journaling. And I'm going to be kind of like looking at my thoughts and looking at my own kind of preferences. And essentially that, that is, funny enough, what I actually did. But I don't discount, you know, speaking to others. But the inclination is to just be with yourself. So to learn yeah. deeper. Do you know what I mean? This is really, 
this is really profound. And okay, I really like like personality mm-hmm. quizzes and all these things, right? So like Tiffany personality has defined me as someone who's mm-hmm. more extroverted. Yeah. Extroverted, sorry. <laughs> and I'm not the letters. Um but I'm still I feel like I'm less extroverted okay. than people would say. So I'm at sixty something, like just about seventy percent on the scale is okay. introversion, extroversion, mm-hmm. which makes sense because like sometimes you just have to like sit down and be by yourself, like you just have to like yeah. But people, as much as I tend to get yeah. charged by them, yeah. I need to I need to stop. I need to I'm not doing anything else with the I'm Absolutely. sitting in my room by myself, but Absolutely. I just need myself. Um and then in terms of the products I said them, obviously like we would never um well, not never, sure. we get to Jannah, inshallah. Mm-hmm. We'll get to know him then. Sure. But in terms of now, we're not gonna know him as a person. I think again, same thing. We talk about mm-hmm. celebrities mm-hmm. and influences. Prophets alike. We don't get to see them in a human light. And obviously, you have to be careful because these are people who are above us and above us and above us. Mm-hmm. But we also have to remember that Allah sent us human beings yes. and not necessarily yes. angels, not jinn, not people that we can't necessarily yeah. see ourselves in, in the regard of doing um, yeah. doing all these goods or, you know, yeah. remembering Allah, essentially. They've been sent to us to guide yeah. us back to Allah. So this is why I think one of my... Well, so, so, obviously, Prophet yeah. Muhammad says, yeah. he's there, right? He's, he's, he's there. And that's his, he's in his only yeah. own place. But after that, my favorite prophet, hands Same. down, is Musa because I think I've mm. learned about him in yes. a human way. So, for example, like, yes. um, let's say, I just, I just feel like I'm not here to talk about him. I'm just like, I would have done yeah. the same thing. Obviously, I'm not him. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. But I just, yeah. I can get it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get it. I get why you did that. Like, let's say when you saw the. <laughs> When he was asking the questions, like, why yeah. are you doing that? What? I like, done say. when he was told, oh, yeah. this person knows more than you, mind He's your business. <laughs> yeah. And then, I just, I'm just itching now. Like, no, I'm itching, one, I'm itching like, now. He did, like, like, every time I come to that, I always like, stop, especially this social class, because it's just like, mm. you did the first bit. Mm. You know, he was just like, you know, I know more than you, mind your business. <laughs> like, did the second. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and you can imagine yourself like not yourself. You can imagine how he was yeah. saying like, this doesn't make sense. I can yeah. feel he sense. was frustrated. Like, I don't get it. I feel that. I can. I could be. Yes, he was I love his stories because I could feel it or like secondhand mm, feeling. Yeah, yeah. There, there. It's human I, I get it. Like yeah. imagine just seeing exact. I thought like he's yeah. He's been made the most human. Let's say for example, like when the Israelites and the Egyptians when they when there was yeah. occupation and whatnot, yeah. and he intervened and like or or. Yeah, I just thought there's so many bits where it's just like it, him making du'a to yeah. Allah to um, you know help him out because he knows yeah. that he can't do the speaking like yeah. just stuff like that like yeah. didn't he just, he just the worst what every time he's like please do this thing that God wants you to do and it will make your life better and they were just like bearing in mind we just we Slavery. were safe from 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 Aaron and Co. Like can yeah, you turn Musa around and see where you came from please. So hard because, like, oh part one gosh. of his story, like, Pharaoh. Part four, two mm. of his story was the journey. No, not even part one. Being born, sorry, <laughs> but then he was born. born. <laughs> no, he wasn't looked after by Pharaoh, was he? He was. He yeah. was yeah. Pharaoh's yeah. wife, right? Uh, yeah, and his thingy. mom. Um, mm-hmm. Allah made it so that his his mom was, was the breast- wet nurse, so she was breastfeeding him. So okay, mm-hmm. but then that even child to was a, yeah. Like, okay, so but he was living in luxury yeah he was yeah. right and then i think he mm-hmm. murdered someone didn't he he did because of an altercation yeah with the... israelite and then um, yeah and the sorry, egyptian yeah egyptian right. and, or, and then, yeah and then he had he, to he go saw... against magic he did and then he had to cross the sea he did after he had to run he away from his like life. you know foster dad basically yeah Ooh. And, and turn against them, mm-hmm. and then he had to do that journey, the journey, and then, the knowledge journey, because at this point he he still was it because he he like he needed to know that he didn't know everything basically. Like why was it that he said he was sent on that journey? There was one long oh, journey to, when he met. To um, make it though, you mean? Yeah, he but he when they were hit, um, so wasn't it the fact that he was someone? I don't know how the beginning of the story works, but. It was that he realised. Yeah, because he, he felt like yeah. he was. Yeah, he, he was had like, pride. No, 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 like, was it pride? Can we call it pride? He had something. Oh. Like he. No, I feel like I feel like the assumption was obviously I'm the prophet. I know I'm the prophet, so I, of course I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be the most knowledgeable. I'm gonna be the most this. Like I am the lead. Like, understandably, you know. But I if you think it. about not like, in a private way, but 
and then he was told otherwise I like, know there's someone else and he's like who's this otherwise and I think he wanted to learn I think he went with okay. good intention he wanted to learn from this this um because I think yeah there was three times three incidents of like this happened this happened this happened and um in the beginning, Hida was like, yeah. "You're not gonna, you're not gonna get it." He's like, yeah. "No, no, no, no! I really want to learn, so I'll yeah. stay. I, I, I promise. I try. I try." <laughs> Again, I can see myself doing this. No, 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 no! I, I promise. I'm gonna be good this time. So yeah, he he. The first thing happened. I used to reverse my story. The first thing happened. He just mm. questioned it. Hida was like, mm. Second thing. I know the things it, that mm. happened, but I don't Third remember. Thing, no, the again. first thing. And he was said the last time. Murdering. Uh, the, the child the, ch- the boy yeah the, the boy. boy the second thing was putting a hole yeah. into the ship in the, in the ship the in thing the thing ship was, and the third thing building was the, wall, the, wall, the the gate the, of the people the that, was, wall. that yeah. were rude to him okay. like why are you helping them for they're disrespectful yeah. <laughs> they don't cost can't even lie this seems them. difficult leave them like of all the prophets I feel like he just seems very difficult like every day resilience let me land no, but I think Musa had a, it had the thing of like if you see something right and wrong, and you like act upon it, which is why he accidentally killed the. Um, he was very yeah, like yeah, just yeah. like if this makes sense, it makes sense. Do you know what I mean like this doesn't make sense? And he was very like firm in mm-hmm. in doing what was right. So he didn't see. It was about the, the whole idea was that Huda had mm-hmm. wisdom beyond him. He would do what he saw was right. So he would see which that is so okay, killing a boy a as we all would. Is wrong. You would think a prophet is yeah, it's like, but like, that can't mm-hmm. be can't be questioned basically. Mm-hmm. And then you have Musa, can't be, and you're like, yeah, mm. I, I I I love <laughs> take a, I actually, take I actually a breather, love, sir. Yeah. Just take make a like, breather. <laughs> How about we think about think on this yeah, and come and back to it tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> No, but I can see how obviously I don't remember. I maybe think about things, but I can see how like the the willingness and the not to say fire, but the drive to do the right thing mm-hmm. means you're gonna do it. Like the good thing about him is that he, I think yeah. he was very sincere. Yeah, that, yeah, like, yeah. This is the right thing to do. I'm firm. I don't care like what people may think of me or whatever. Like I know what is right. I'm gonna do what's right. Or I see what's right. I'm gonna live by that. all the prophets like that. No, I think. The the moment I, I I I'm thinking of was when I need to double double check this and I'm so sorry if I'm getting Musa's story wrong because I need to go back and re up it, but I think it was when he left for a bit and told the people. Was that when he wanted to abandon them? I can't remember. But the one of the incidents is when he left for a bit. He told the people leave the golden cow alone. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember. Okay. And then he came back and they slaughtered it. Yeah. Yeah. And then he was just like, he's done with these people. And when they worshiping the cow as well, and then he was, he was like to his brother, "I told you to watch them. Why are they worshiping this?" Yeah. When he grabbed by the yeah, I can totally see myself going to Sophia's <laughs> school. But I told you, like one job, one job, <laughs> one job. <laughs> but then it also just shows you like how one job difficult the people he had were, and that people are difficult in general. No matter the time period, people always want to talk about golden age. People have been annoying since the beginning of time. Now you see why I don't <laughs> like them. <laughs> Like, you you literally had someone that has been performing miracles. If someone split the sea, before I worship the cow, so I would probably start eyes. worshiping him. That's more logical for me. You don't split the sea yes. and then worship the cow he brought. Like, <laughs> how do you do that? But what, wasn't there a cow? Wasn't there a thing that, I think it was a cow what kind of figure they made because when they were crossing the sea mm-hmm. Angel Jibril had walked there and then they took the sand and they mixed it with the gold and then the, the cow started making yeah I think the cow the cow wasn't thing. a real it, it, not, it, wasn't, it wasn't real it was like because down. they mixed the stuff and obviously Angel Angel vibes it started making noise and then they're like oh my gosh this is some but then even cow. then <gasps> even the then not even there. the person that split even the sea still, come on I mean oh. man split and not even sorry can we not forget he did the whole. Yeah. This is why I'm saying the white, uh, white, hand. white hand thing. But you still want to be acting. And like the cow, cow doesn't even speak. We were never told that the cow could communicate. So I don't know how Not the once. cow did that. This was just them. Of the, this was Shaitan and them. Yeah. But doesn't. But the, if there are people that okay, we can say oh, but they did this, they did that. They are reflective mm-hmm. of mankind. In terms I can of totally like see that. people do that people in this day and age. I'm not even, and they do. Like, people hundred percent. They assign you know, idol, idolatry to things that never asked. Never, like, the worth they put on even, like, random artists like Picasso yeah. and Banksy, like... Yeah. Did you not see the guy who sold uh, Invisible yeah. Statue for 13000 
I literally heard about that yesterday. He stole oh, an invisible statue for 13,000, is like, it dollars or pounds? One. And then too much money. It reminded me of the, King, too much. the King's invisible robe. Like, you know that story that we're yeah. taught, the fable that we're taught of literally. foolishness, basically. Yeah. How do you have mm-hmm. that kind of example <laughs> okay. and then still go and buy invisible products? Because they stable vibes. I didn't even bother to read the article because <laughs> I just thought I'm not stooping down to your level. No. Nope. I don't nope. want to understand how this is. I don't care nope. what tw- what language you used. Mm-mm. Nothing. I, I just, it, does, it doesn't make sense to me and this is this is what's crazy like yeah you have these people who are given clear signs and they still yeah. don't see yeah. and it makes you like you yeah, yeah that's scary but so yeah scary. back scary. to those I'm also trying to let his salam you I love guys that salam no I do I do I do love this prophet like when I get to Jannah when we all get to Jannah they love us Jannah I really want to just sit down and just mine is Eunice like, Eunice is the one that like Real, the one that literally oh, said, like, I'm, I'm out done. Here. All of you are moving. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. done. And then a belly of a whale. You were in a whale. For me, that story shows me two things. Mm. One, like you said, the humanity of uh, prophets. And mm. two, the mercy of Allah. Yes. Because he was done a lot in him. Like, I've never heard of a prophet that retired before. Like, for me, it's just absolutely... <laughs> he just... <laughs> It's about to prove because sometimes because I'm tired. I'm, I'm, I'm just really I'm like taking a break. I really have to wake up and pray five times a day for sixty years. <laughs> it's so long. that fajr prayer be hitting sometimes, especially in this heat. And yeah. I'm just there like, should I do the sunnah or not? <sighs> should I do the sunnah? It's or true. Not? I do the sunnah, and then you're like, oh, too rough. I can just bust two more. It's calm. But my mentality is never like. Not never, I shouldn't say never, but sometimes it's not like, especially in this heat when you wake up and you you, you try to get your prayer in and everything and your, mm-hmm. your, your limbs are achy and stuff. And you're just kind of like, mm-hmm. do this prayer and go back to sleep because I'm tired. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. and so when I think mm-hmm. that someone quit a whole, you know, preaching to the nation, because I've not even got to the preaching to the nation, but I, I, I don't even do that part of my job. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's true, I'm just doing level, one person, one two, two requirements. I do not have the 10 years experience that they're requiring. I'm just, I'm, I'm not interning. I'm so done. So all the dawah, all the half your dean, all these extra spices that people are sprinkling. I'm here like... Sprinkle, sprinkle. Hmm. I have my five sure. plates. So I'm just trying to get the salah down. Mm-hmm. Get the Quran, get the zakah down. Let me it's get these down. My dad, my, my dad was talking about doing the fasting of Dawood the other day, and I was just oh. like, "Yeah, I've done that before in my Ooh. life." Yeah, <laughs> but there was a time I did that. <laughs> I was actually thinking never. Oh, I was literally thinking about doing this year. yesterday actually. So I was thinking, ah, oh, you know, fasting is great and all. Let me, let me. What can mm-hmm. I be doing to like be a better Muslim? And I, then I looked at the time of Fajr. <laughs> Then I looked at the time of Mugga, but I said, hmm. For me, it's not even the time. It's, it's like the heat. The heat right now. I'm back it's, in water. It's the heat. Both I'm me. okay. It's, it's both of me. I'll I never forget. I think it was Ramadan last year. And so I was like, oh, how's Ramadan going? I'm like, I'm hungry. You mm-hmm. know? Like, I'm not even going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I That's fast because even, I love yeah. Allah. And although it's so merciful, mm-hmm. he says you make up your fast from the time Ramadan ends to the next one. So when winter time comes, best believe I can get in my summer fast. Yeah, have you, like, like, have have you done? Shows. Have you done your additional six? And I'm just there, like I've been wanting to tweet this because I was just like, <laughs> I need. I don't. I'm not a fan of tweeting corruption because I'm just like I. I, I don't want to promote. Yeah. My, you know, what's it? My inability. But I really wanted to tweet the fact that people are talking mm-hmm. about their six, and I'm not even think like I don't care. I'm not even trying to be rude, but I'm yeah. just like, I'm no. not doing No, same. Like, Let's be yeah. safe. It's a safe space. Not even like I don't I care. said no. I'm I sad that I can't do it. I said yeah. no. But this is the first time I'm actually not even trying. Like, I'm whispering. I'm, I'm laughing out of shame, but I'm just Really? <laughs> I, I think... No, 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 no. I feel like, I think especially mm. with religious spaces, there's this really difficult balance of... Um, <laughs> Do my cables. Intellect, really intellect, go difficult on. Difficult balance of mm-hmm. the <laughs> <laughs> of trying to um, be 
and strive to be good and striving to for the best and striving mm-hmm. towards Allah as we should. But also being honest with where you are and honest with what you've got and honest with your, I guess, humanity. And humanity isn't entirely flawed. Obviously, there's good parts of it. But there's also mm-hmm. the bits where it's just like, I'm tired. And I don't feel like Muslims, I, I can't speak for other religious spaces, but I think especially in 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 the Muslim space, because of this concept of piety and righteousness, we don't afford space for this, oh. I need to breathe up. Even if it's just a breather, let alone maybe it's, it's that it's that maybe corruption element basically because you're doing. like taking people, misleading people away from the dean is just not something we want to do. So it's almost yeah. like you don't want to be the source yeah. of corruption. But then, of but at the same time, I feel like it doesn't fall well on people to expect to see everyone or to think everyone is perfect, and that's something that I maybe mm. think less of now. But I think. There's a, there's a difference between there being shame of oh I don't want to do this or I can't do this or I'm not gonna mm-hmm. I'm gonna sit this one out because you know yourself you know your body you know what this means to you and seeing that as a shame from other people seeing that as a oh, I'm not mm-hmm. good business, I'm like performing for other people I, mean. mm-hmm. yeah. I feel like yeah. yeah which I think it's okay there's first of all making sure you're to sit towards Allah that's something that we should all be trying to renew and whatnot but it's, additionally it's because we expect perfection from each other when it's the not reality is business business either. Either. not perfect at all like do you know what I mean and I feel like I think I see I think about it every now and again it's like for example yeah on a show that I'm maybe feeling or thinking this for example with the, with the show out, I, I said no but like you said if I tweeted that now is am I looking mm. like someone who's misleading people I, I, I don't know I feel like the space is yeah it's not it's not real it's not it's not it's not it's not comfortable it's not a safe space for me i don't i disagree with you there like i chose not to tweet it because what what was the purpose of me tweeting it validation because i thought about it i was just like why am i tweeting it validation okay acceptance Mm -hmm. i want to be patted on the back and told it's okay like none of these things are things that are positive (laughs) in the situation that we're in like obviously it's a good sauna they, they say if you do this you, it'll be like you fasted for the whole... It's something to strive to do. So I don't want it to be... Not that I don't want it to be okay not to do it, but the reasons that I am tweeting this, there's nothing of benefit that's going to happen from me telling people, mm. oh, I'm not bothering with the sunnah this year. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like it, yeah. So that's why I kind of was just like... There's, a, there's certain things that we tweet these days and the reason we're tweeting it is because we want validation in order yeah. to not do the things that we're supposed to do or the things that we could do to be better. And, but I, mm-hmm. I also fully understand what you're saying, how there is no kind of like space for you to be flawed in a way. Mm-hmm. But then now I've started to realise that yeah. that space has to be an internal space. That has to be built mm-hmm. by you, for you, mm-hmm. in a place where like, of I realise that I have work to do Mm-hmm. On my because right now my man is being affected by the heat, mm-hmm. and that for me is a bit of a weak excuse. Like it's like really and truly it's hot in Jahannam. So <laughs> what are we mm-hmm. saying, sis? Like mm-hmm. can we not? Do you know what I'm saying? Like I can't ride out. On my, like you have to be really honest with yourself with certain things. But then with okay, there's, I think there's a difference between I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. There's a difference between oh, I'm not going to mm-hmm. fast when I'm gone. Because I'm, exactly. I'm this an excuse. And I'm not going to do... So I feel like, yeah, don't be tweeting. Don't be tweeting about fasting on the gun. I'm not... I'm, on, I'm gonna... Mm. But I feel like in terms of, oh, I missed out on the sunnah this time round. Maybe Definitely, there's a difference with, with, with like sunnahs. I think, like, my journey. thing has just been, like, rather than tweeting it, I'd rather... Like, I thought to myself, I'd rather tweet me or last spare me till to next year so that people yeah. can say I mean to that so that I can try it again next year kind it's of thing. True. Like, I'm saying yeah. to you guys because it's a safe space and I know that, like, what are you going to do? Shoot me? Like, nothing. But when yeah. my dad asked me, I was just like, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's nice. I didn't tell him that I wasn't even trying because <laughs> I just thought I really have no leg to stand on. Yeah. Like, I know I'm fatigued. I know I'm yeah. hot. I know I'm tired. But yeah. it's like, I have accepted that I don't want to do it this year. Like, I just, mm-hmm. like, I know Ramadan was much for me this year. And yeah. I know I'm really, really hot and I'm thirsty and I'm dehydrated and I just can't. Yeah. But I, it's not something I'm proud of. Yeah, like, it's not a brag. It's mm. just... Yeah, yeah. Do you understand? It's not a flex. And, and I, I see it's both sides in what you're saying. And I did think about the fact that it's not about bragging about not doing this sana so like i get the whole seeking validation aspect but then also because it's not saying that i'm not fasting like for me 
you know, I'm not even onto it, but I do cringe when Muslims are just kind of fl- like they just flamboyant about stuff. flamboyant about the blatantly haram. Like I, that makes me cringe, you know. And I'm like, if that's not what you're doing, you know, if you're talking about your, like your genuine struggles, like for example, when when back when I had Twitter, sisters would tweet about <laughs> leaving their f- makeup fast until like you know a week before Ramadan. I'm like, some sisters can relate to that. I'm not one of them because for me, I'm not trying to. That's make just up bad fast. math to me. <laughs> you, <laughs> you just made Ramadan yeah, six weeks. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See things like that. So someone might take that as oh, but how could you put that out there because mm. this is not good? You should be making the fast up as soon as possible, mm. etc., etc. Or even just in, are you not embarrassed yeah. that you do it winter kind of thing? But I feel like on the beneficiary side, it kind of gives you like an oh, okay, we're, we're both yeah. struggling together. We, we can both make it together. How oh, we can fast together, and then yeah. you know that next time, hopefully okay. next time we're not going to do the same thing. But as the humanity back into the religion because. It, otherwise, you might think mm. they might think because it's not me. They might think that oh my gosh, yeah. I'm the only one that did it first in winter. Like no, like a lot of people didn't make it up their fast last minute. Mm. In, you know in, in, what I mean? in in a position to that, I don't know what word to use. When I think about it, if we was to choose friends mm-hmm. and stuff, would you not want to surround yourself with high achievers and high aspirate like people have high aspirations rather than people who are coasting by? I'm not saying like I'm not giving any of the previous people with regards to fast titles, but I'm saying when you're mm-hmm. selecting the people that you want to surround yourself by, you tend to want to surround yourself by people who are striving, who are above, who are, you know, on the way. Like, you look for mentors if you're trying to do something. But then when yeah. it comes to religion, yeah. it's like sometimes we're looking for people who are happily on the layaway side with us. Like, oh, yeah, like, mm. oh, I'm just making my, my fasts up right now. It's a day before. So mm. it, it's kind of yeah. like mm. with religion, we ex- we lower the bar a lot to be careful. when it comes mm. to... Like, fair enough, it's mm-hmm. difficult. Like, we all know how difficult religion is. But then... Jannah has also been kind of described as this kind of amazing thing. So it makes more sense for you to... Like, if I was surrounding myself by people who were striving, who was giving me examples of how to achieve... This is also why I don't tweet corruption sometimes, because I'm just kind of like... Mm. Having people who are on their path to betterment, being the majority, will always be better for me than having yes. people normalise slack behaviour. Because then mm. if I get comfortable... Before, mm-hmm. you know, I'm worshipping a cow too. Like people be put in mm, but, but I would say is it is it a thing of okay I think again maybe where I'm coming from I, I, I get where you're coming from but I think maybe where I'm coming from is that okay where I'm driving you're driving the next person's driving is it not like not reassuring but is it not rehumanizing to see okay in your strife you may have fumbled here not to say that oh I'm I'm because I, I get what you mean when people put it out just to mm. lower the bar it's to say that the bar is here for me I would do when I yeah, raise it. That's why I like, feel like it's an internal thing. Like you really have to, I mean? because that's why at the end of the day, Islam is an individual journey. You really mm. have to have Great. that conversation with yourself and look inwards and be honest with yourself about your position without feeling like I have people, or I've seen people feel a type of way when you know those nakabis with a petal or the flower emoji on their face start tweeting, and I'm like, why are you mad at them for? They're striving on a different path. It's really none of your business. Like I. Yeah. So, like unless they're tweeting something that is obviously haram like that woman talking about lack of testosterone is what's making people gay like oh. unless they're tweeting things that are oh, just okay. obviously inaccurate i don't understand why people get mad at people giving religious like i get that some people might look at that and feel like, oh, the religion is too difficult, I'm not going to try it. But that's not your target audience, babe. Like, the shoe does mm. not fit for you. Like, focus on where your shoe fits. Like, that's that's why I feel mm-hmm. like it's a very personal and individual thing and we all have to look inwards and be brutally honest with ourselves about, like, where our iman is, where, mm. like, you know, where we are on the scale of even, like, knowledge. Because I feel like a lot of people that don't even, aren't even learning. They're just talking out of their ass. And then yeah. it's like you're now wondering why you're getting corrupted left, right and centre. And it's you, if you are, if you have that internal space and you can look inwards and go, this is me, this is where I am, this is da-da-da-da, you're not going to be fumbled by outside. That's why I can come out here and be like, I'm not doing this month or whatever, because... Because you have security mm-hmm. in yourself. And I feel, yeah, a lot of people don't have that security in, not just that you're very man and then you come to live. Mm. In, in your identity, you haven't got those, like, 
foundation. I'm not saying that I am like perfect. I'm definitely not. But I feel like I think I know myself enough online. And I know. I mean, you have to have. Yeah. You have to be in touch with yourself, and then go out if you want to go out. Which is why sometimes I look. I don't be tweeting. I feel like I tweet more than <laughs> in my head more than I do in real life because I don't need it. So I tweet well. for fun. I generally tweet for fun. Like, yeah, like, or I just think and I just. It doesn't have to be on my phone, but I feel like some people, or it looks like I will never know, but look at some people need that external reassurance and yeah. validation and to be filled from outside. You have to fill yourself from inside. And like you said, create those spaces within yourself, whether that be, be right man whatever, or whatever, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. other parts of your life that you, you need. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then you know how to leave. Like, then you know how to act online if you want to act online or this, that, the other. Like, if you haven't, if you haven't done the work offline, by yourself, right. yourself you need to know what your everything else follows mm-hmm. like. mm-hmm. there's a like I can sit here and talk about <laughs> being Muslim is hard <laughs> like I can say that with my chest but that doesn't mean I'm gonna be any less of a Muslim tomorrow like being a Muslim is yeah. not the type of hardness that is hard for me to quit exams are hard uni was hard I wanted to quit that like that's the answer but Islam is like it's hard but I'm not quitting so that's like it's as, it's as much of a reality as my skin colour. Like, these are the things that are facts for me. Yeah. And so I think a lot of... Yeah. I get that it's... I, I don't know, like, it's just really... It's two sides to it, isn't it? Like, you want to be able to say, this is difficult, without feeling like you're any less of a Muslim. Yeah. Which I think is what... I think sometimes is what's hard. Because sometimes if you say, oh, this is hard for me, or like... A lot of people look at you like you're less than or mm. your yeah well, that's their problem mm. again like, going back to the beginning like what in terms of like the bound like the boys and the whatever the girls and the boundaries like if i tweet that oh my struggle is fasting right or, like as much as i do it i find it physically hard on me this that the other again that's not saying that removing the person that does it for validation like someone like me who just tweets for tweet's sake I know myself and I know where, where, where that comes from. I know what that means. I know... I, I just don't see why anybody else looking at me will have to now judge me as a Muslim. At the end of the day, who's going to judge me as, 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 as a Muslim? It's not going to be you. On that day, no one's going to be checked for no one. So, like, I personally don't get the whole... I don't... I don't... I wouldn't understand why if I tweet something like, oh, I find fasting... Maybe it's this is where I come from. If I tweet, I'm finding fasting hard why now the next person has to look at me like tweeting i'm finding listen. fasting hard and it's tweeting, just a, um oh i don't even i'm not even um i'm not even gonna fast show us it's, it's, it's just a sunnah anyways something like that i think they're two different things like saying i'm finding something hard so i'm not going to do it is very different to dismissing something or the worth of something which some people do another like flip argument or flip example is when ramadan's mm. coming and people say oh non-muslim friends this is how you can support muslims during this time don't tweet food and i'm like yeah that's, that's not it it's very uh, uh, for me personally it, I think, it's, it's, that makes sense. it's a lot of ex- to fast, external so. dependence yeah that comes yeah. with being muslim mm-hmm, online exactly. these days it's very much like oh my god, I need to talk to people about how hard or how this or da-da-da-da and then set rules. And then you have people be like, how can nice. I be an ally to you in this time? Hey, just ignore it's that. Like, you're not going to like, <laughs> like a regular human <laughs> being the job in my head, let's move on. Like, why? Sh- true, why? Like, yeah. there's a lot of, um, and I think this might be a separate topic, but there's a lot of conversations online now where it's kind of packaged the dean as some sort of, like, act of resistance. Like... Look at look at these Muslims doing these mm. things, wearing hijab in this heat. May Allah do this, and it's just like look at these Muslims did. Like it's like a we, it's, it's I, a performance piece. It's very much like this thing that you're naturally supposed to do has become yeah this this, this, this thing, thing this trophy this this badge is a blue this Peter badge. badge. Mm. And I get okay, I think there in that regard I can see why there's a perception of like the bars being lowered, but um. I just think it's weird. Forget the bar and forget. I just think it's weird. Like, what? How does it? What does this do for my life? Like, generally, really and truly, what does this do for my life? So let's say now, with the whole tweeting, um, tweeting food or talking about food or eating around you kind of thing, outside of Ramadan, 
were we eating? So when you tweeted your chickens, was I eating chickens immediately or was it forced down my mouth? Or I just, that to me, it just doesn't make sense. Like, I, every time, okay, like, even if I'm sitting somewhere, if someone's eating, yeah, okay, I said earlier, we before culturally, what not, but like, let's say you're in a working space or a public space and someone's eating, doesn't mean you're going to eat too. Like, to me, that food thing makes zero sense. I feel like maybe in work, like, oh, understanding that I've made it, I don't want to work late because of my this and that is something that you can discuss. But, like, I don't need you to pat me on the back for something that I have chosen to do and I very much enjoy doing it in terms of spirituality. And it's just strange. But I just think it's strange behavior. That one I, I never understand. Just fast and get over and done with. Like, same thing with, yeah, like, wearing hijab. Like, I, I've seen it a few, few for the last few weeks. Oh my gosh, it's so hard. I can't, I can't imagine how you, how you guys are feeling. I've been doing this for like <laughs> years. <laughs> years. And even if you haven't been doing it for years or whatever, it's like, what does this, this, this packaging, or what, what does this noise mean <laughs> for my life? Like, are you giving me internal AC now? Or are we, are you shortening the day to yeah. make my fast? Do, do you know what I mean? Like, if you want to help me, help me on a practical yeah. level, I think anyway. Otherwise, yeah. you're just making noise. Like a lot of it is noise allies. No, just making noise. noise. And also, do I even want your help? Like, I was very happy sweating here. If I had to sweat here in my in my in my clothes, like I didn't I didn't complain to you in that way. Like more time is, is never thing of, a thing of I made it a problem. I never complained about fasting. Like I never complained. There was an article so, my mom shared me, I'll share it with you guys about shared to me. Okay. I'll share it. And it was about the woman who um, who someone dropped on her in Westfield. And so she ended up being uh, disabled, like wheelchair bound. <gasps> the oh, medical no. student, I don't know if you remember, like a couple of years ago, someone dropped from Westfield and landed on someone. Oh, gosh. And, um, she was, and the, the article was basically talking about how like um, she, <clears throat> um, like the difference she's been making in the disabled not even in disabled just in general shout out. I don't space. want to say in the disabled space in general she was talking about like her journey and that mm-hmm. how like you know at one point she got to terms mm-hmm. with it by you know thinking about the fact that she saved this guy and then at some point like um basically she's just talking about like her journey of going from being um able-bodied mm-hmm. To, I, I'm very careful because I'm not sure which are the right terms to be saying anymore. Yeah, what to, to being disabled yeah. or mm-hmm. non less abled. I'm again. I'm not sure what the terms yeah. are. So apologies disabled is to still um fine. to anybody. But um, basically, she was talking about how there was something she said that was really key to me, and it was how like her she hasn't changed. Like she can mm-hmm. um, obviously like her situation has changed, but her as a person has not yeah. become any less able to achieve things or do things or exist than before yeah. it's just the manner at which she exists has kind of changed right but then she's yeah. like the way people treat mm. her and the way people react to her is almost like first of all she got people you know feeling sorry for her because someone did this to her and then she got people um you know like she people were very much reacting to the fact that she was disabled as if it was something that um was was bad as if it was something that oh my god like people say stuff like if i couldn't even imagine how to live if this happened to me you know those kind yeah. of statements those kind of like a yeah i couldn't imagine yeah like they yeah. like, were reacting okay. to it as if <laughs> right and so she was that talking about like... how like life is this is normal for her like this is her new normal but this is life for her right like yeah. she all her thinking changed and this was this is i need to find like how she kind of worded it but this is this is life for her so you reacting mm-hmm. to her you yes. reacting to this situation she hates it because it's like are you looking at me as lesser are you looking yeah. at me as a as an object like how do you, i and so she gets she was basically talking about how like when she goes to open doors and people are like no i'll get that for you like they're looking mm. at you through eyes of pity and they're looking at you through yeah. eyes of othering basically and yeah. then they they automatically assign you into this box and yeah. then you she's trying to explain that she functions just fine like she functions differently to you yeah. but she functions like it's not a less than more than like it's just this it is, is life this is normal yeah. right and so mm. go on. 
with the no so i read that and it really made me think about Mm -hmm. how people react to others like people treat especially white people as a as a center because they are the majority especially in this country they treat anything other as some sort of project or some sort of you know like sample of yeah and so it's like oh my i cannot imagine like no one asked you to imagine like this is normal this is true like this you're is- making it all about you like, you're making That's an experiment like if it's you put the scarf on and donned life and became muslim you wouldn't start imagining yourself like you would just live i don't imagine myself just be- as a white woman i just live yeah. do you know what i mean but it's this kind of yeah. idea that i cannot imagine like oh let me do this let me help you like let yeah. me they start kind of and and that's she was talking about how like they've centered like all the narratives around them. Yeah. And then everyone else is yes. living in their reality. Yeah. So once you yeah. no longer fit that reality, yes. like you should read the article because as soon as first of all, I came out thinking, okay, first of all, the way I think about disabled people is completely wrong. And that's yeah. been molded by this, like even Hollywood and all of these things, like the way they tell other people's stories is mm-hmm. very much when yeah. I exist as a Muslim woman, I think half the time I'm like, just ignore the hijab. Like it's not is literally not there yeah. why does having this on automatically mean that i'm some mm-hmm. freak the way you treat me like, is just different like, it's, 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 respect yeah like respect the fact that my needs are different to yours uh, but aside from that i'm i'm very much living life like the life i live is my reality it's normal yeah you yeah. are the different one like i'm not looking at you like oh my god exactly. <laughs> <laughs> literally how do you wash your hair every day I, here and do you, that. You, and you I genuinely that. could never do that I could never it's literally otherwise I, my hair would up but yeah um, yeah 100% with the one thing you mentioned that I try and think about and maybe do better on is maybe, maybe like offering I think the way people offer assistance to work as, as well can be very intrusive it is a, there's a line between yeah. being genuinely yeah. um, helpful and then patronising yeah. and like you said intrusive so for example even Let's if say, you are yeah, just to clarify just to even if you are generally helpful people. you're, yeah, you're being generally helpful from your point of view mm-hmm. if they've yeah. not asked for your assistance yes. more to, to if you read the article you'll get a better idea but it's like more time than not they don't need your assistance yeah and if but, they ask for, yeah yeah they would ask it will be clear that your assistance is required there'll be a cue to be like okay yeah. can i get you the door for you and therefore you get the door so like my example in my head is actually just trying to think through, have I done this before? But yeah, we're all trying to bear ourselves with all these things. But like when people have um, buggies um, mm-hmm. on the stairs and whatnot, the, and you can see this mostly woman struggling with like, oh, how's she going to do it? I always look for my help. Do you want yeah. to just grab yeah. the buggy? Do you know what I mean? So I feel like similarly, you need to yeah. read the room. Because no. some people don't be reading the room. And then go, oh, do you want me to do this? Whether it looks like this person is struggling or not, like you have to give the them autonomy. that life. You have to the autonomy and give the them the license yeah. to uh-huh, the autonomy to exist in the way. <laughs> key words I love autonomy and agency to. No, I really do autonomy and agency to live the life that they want. So if they mm-hmm. want to struggle with yeah. this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, let them. Do you know what I mean? I don't have to force myself on them. That gives that you that good Samaritan high, but that's none of like your you business. Said, and well, you yeah. don't, you don't need I'm, that. Literally, you, you're giving mm. yourself some righteous flex. It's a righteous trip. One, two, you are. You have set like to centered yourself in their life and assumed better that you know how to yeah. live their life better than them almost. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, no, 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 they must need help because I have this mm. body and I have this. Yeah. And I don't know. Like, let them, they know themselves like, probably better than they you. Were literally, um, and this is like detrimental, like understand? life and death situations, yeah, all these extreme things. And even then, something life and death happens in front of me, like it is, I'm gonna call <laughs> someone who knows what they're doing. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't. I will, you know, I know how to, do, I know how to Google. <laughs> I know how to Google. I know how to, I know how to call for help. I wouldn't necessarily insert myself. I feel like it's a matter of, again, going back to like knowing yourself, maybe, because if you know yourself and you have grounding in yourself and your identity, you're not, you're less likely to try and find that in others and in the way you are yeah. interacting with others, if that makes sense. Because sometimes it might be a thing of like, you want to help someone just so you feel good in yourself and just so you Absolutely. feel like you're somebody and you feel like yeah. you have something. Whereas if you know you've got something, you don't need to then go and... Yeah, I, can't, I can't articulate it properly. Yeah. Inf- in- infantize, is it? I think, so, I, mean, I think the word is infantile or infantile. Like, even when I think about the way people treat homeless people sometimes and they don't give them agency and autonomy either and they're very yeah. much like, oh, sometimes people are like, don't give homeless people money, give them food and give them this and give them... And I'm like, these are adults making choices. Yeah. No. yeah. 
These are human. Oh my gosh, homeless people are. She the, talks to I, them. I, I call for them because it's like <laughs> she. <laughs> no, I do because again, it's um, okay. Do I talk to them, chatty, 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 chatty? No. It, well, it depends on the situation, but it's like when I see them. Obviously, I'm thinking well, you're clearly on the streets. So I feel like that is something I can hopefully safely say that it's not ideal. Mm-hmm. You probably didn't choose to be there, right? Cool. I always ask, do you want this? Do you want this? I don't just go here. You go like yeah, I'm that. I think I do. Do you want this or do you want that? And I feel like there's a time we were doing um, a this is maybe a while ago. You know I did, but there was a time we were doing like a food drive or trying to give people food, and then this person was like, "No, I'm a vegetarian or something like that." And I think people were confused as to like, "What? Like you're homeless? You don't know where you're going to get the next the meal?" And then it's just like, yeah. "What you think?" It's just like, I don't think they were being um, mean about it. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the way I'm saying it yeah. is very like but, telling a story, but yeah. at the time there was a bit of confusion of like, "What? Why would you deny yeah. us food? It's just food like." But it's almost like saying, why can you, how can yeah. you have the right to be yeah. a vegetarian yeah. because it's you a, have no home? Like, yeah. And that's it's not a, right. Like, Sorry, I'm, I'm just struggling with my ears. But it's a superiority complex. Like, you're criminalising, not those people specifically, but the homeless get criminalised, you know, for being homeless. And then the mm. disabled are infantilised. I think that's the word you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, I need to help them. Yes, I, yes. I, I, I know better for them. I'll never forget reading a tweet. And it was like, all these tweets from disabled people essentially talking about able-bodied people imposing themselves on them so talking about let me help you let me help you this one woman said this person came behind her start pushing her wheelchair i saw that i saw i was like why would you you know my hands (laughs) what kind of madness is that you're gonna tell me that 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 what they did is good because they thought it was good that's a, that's a literal invasion. And you know what's mad practice. is that the person in the chair has to be like, oh, thank you, thank you, it's okay. No. Listen, listen, no. listen. Get no. the flip off me. The madness no. of it was, I was astounded. Because also, your your chair, it's I would imagine. quite personal. Like, imagine that's it's, like, it's, 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 it's your body, yeah, it's, like, it's a personal, personal thing. thing. Like, it, come on. Imagine... I can like, imagine, like, but imagine somebody yeah. for people walk pushing you yeah. along the road because you need some. I was going to say, I can actually imagine hmm? people on the tube or whatever shifting your chair into a more comfortable Mad. space. Like, I can see people do these things. Like, if your chair's in the way, just shifting it because you know, move. It's, 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 it's not. It's not. Econ- I think it's, yeah, it's not. Econo- it's it's not economical the way you've positioned yeah. it. So I just neating you up into the corner, tidy. Oof. I can imagine. Really, I can that's literally rude. Imagine that, that happens. But I can see, I know what you mean, but like, do pe- like yes. where do people come from? Because, okay, let's say you're on the central line and someone's chair is taking up a bit of space. Most likely, the likelihood is sorry that you're going to say nothing because yeah. it's peak out here in the tube anyway. But if it's really a problem, where are your manners to just ask, oh, sorry, excuse me, can you move a chair a little bit? Move, move a little bit. Not even move a chair, just can you, mm-hmm. um, we, we need some space, can you, can you move up? Like everybody would. Like asking them no. like a normal, human, <laughs> normal, sorry. But asking yeah. them as a human being because like, at the end of the day they're not seeing them as yeah. which is why you think you can move them because if you were to compare that to someone who was not in a chair or mm. in, differently abled right nope. you never just nope. push somebody right so in the same way where's the sense like why would you move somebody but I, I know what you mean I can totally see it happening too because there's this thing of like mm. looking down upon people whether it be the homeless whether it be the the people in chairs or yeah. differently Others. abled people um uh, yeah, like othering people. So I guess it might. I can imagine people like othering us as like hijab wearers and black yeah. people and as women and like. Besides, I'm not imagining it happens. We know it happens. It's a very like, much lived reality. Do you understand? Keep it pushing. Anyone that tries to live their life outside of the <laughs> like you know social norm mm. is now an experiment for you to because like even on the extreme, not even on the extreme, but even like ugh, people who dress up or cosplayers or mm. sorry. Oh, wow. yeah, oh my gosh yeah. but like even those like people feel the moment you wear um what's it called something those, different like clothing yeah. like drag or whatever people feel entitled to ask you questions or move or touch you or be like oh because it's different yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. just yeah. dress up for eid and get on I the tube people and people will be like oh oh it's what's true. This? Oh, I what's that? What material is this? That it all of a sudden, you it's are like, yeah, yeah, and that's you're, you're just clothing. clothing. It's true. That's why, Fair for example, if that's why, for example, okay, this is something that I've technically still experienced with my scarf, but I won't go into that story today. This is why um, black women's yeah. hair gets like grabbed. 
because it's like oh my yeah. gosh this hair has it's to very be much you're, on, uh-uh. you're like you said the spectacle you are now on the entertainment block for everybody yeah, like yeah. you nice. wear agbada or something on the tube and yeah. people start asking questions and there's a limit and a line to that curiosity there's mm-hmm. a mind your freaking mm-hmm. business that needs mm-hmm. to happen which there's not been a very you know huge social and this is not even saying that people aren't open and welcome to but not everybody is here to be your source of you know google these days yes, you can um, upload a picture when, onto we're google not your, we're not your learning experience Literally. we're not your think, we're not your learning, we're not your learning curve, curve. We're not your i'm actually human being we're human beings yeah if you want a course the internet's there but like yeah even with clothes i feel like again it's, it's i think it comes down to like manners and context of things like um there's a, definitely a way to ask people oh like what is this like because you like it or there's definitely a way to like go about learning about people who are different to you in a non-patronizing non-self-righteous kind of way i feel like these people don't do that because realistically it's about me being a normal me being the upper and me being the standard and you making sure that i'm that you know you're mm-hmm. not that sort of thing because like okay i can meet somebody from again what's the like that i would actually ask but if i'm genuinely intrigued i'll be like oh you think it's nice like where's it from or what's it called there's a way to do that that doesn't have to be oh my gosh what is this and it's not a compliment thing? your interest yeah. in me is what's not a this? compliment it's not flattering it's not something exactly. because then it's very much like exactly. i do not even mean any harm i just, just and then they go straight into victim i, I just wanted to touch it i just want to touch it. i didn't mean it I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that being said though last thing before we wrap up because it's boiling hot now <laughs> i wanted to go now <laughs> Oh yeah, not. I was thinking this. But last thing, I remember hey. something that I wanted to bring up earlier, which I forgot to bring up, and it was the fact that someone, um, I think it's Davido's uh, baby mama, I think mm. I, I don't know, but she basically posted this like complaint about how um, she went shopping. I don't think this happened in Nigeria, but she went shopping with the child. I think daughter. I'm not sure what the gender is, um, but she went shopping with the child, and people came up to her. And she said something like someone grabbed the daughter and started taking pictures of the daughter. And oh, so she, like, yeah, with the daughter and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then she yeah. was basically cussing and saying, like, what kind of management, what, what kind of behaviour is run in this store that people think they can just grab people's children and start yeah. taking pictures because they recognise them. And then, yeah. because that's not even the tip of yeah. the story, so she must have posted that. Then somebody what? else responded with all fully functional functionalities. <laughs> you know we we have we we have to you know even question the completion of this person's um embryo because (laughs) they commented that this is what happens when you are famous that this is part of the parcel like why are you trying to move big because people stop to have interest in your door this is what happened Mm -hmm. she was like Mm -hmm. um you have you yourself have uploaded all these pictures of your door online but we we can't come and take pictures of your door Mm -hmm. i need to find this for you and then she was just like Mm -hmm. You're, Everybody so just like, is gonna get full oh, you're just mad like, because no matter what you do, you'll always be a baby mama, you'll never be the main chick. Even after this, you're still not gonna wow. be his wife. Huh? And I just thought huh? it's like foolishness <sighs> meant delusion. Because yes. how can you say she's um, famous, but then also say you think you're big, but then you also say that your child is public property? What kind of foolishness? I, I was just like and that uh, okay yeah he's, she's a baby mama but like obviously they made those choices that was she's just trying, she's just trying to make That's a dick trying to make a dick because nah. if the issue was her married, issue dick, was the fact that she was be... a baby mama that was the woman's issue it was so clear madness because it was, it, it was very no, much but, you are mistress okay, you're not if, important shut up 